Welcome to Creative Tian channel. Today we want to make a neck warmer with cables. And we are using LK150 knitting machine and the worsted way yarn. I'm going to set up my tension to number 6 because with cable pattern it tends to get tight. And the upper mass tension is number 5. To make the project simple, I'm making a mark ribbon at the beginning and the end of the neck warmer. So I cast on every other needle from the left 50 to right 49 because it has to be an odd number. So I have one stitch less than 100. But it depends on how tight you like your neck warmer. You can add or subtract some stitches. And I'd like to start with the simple e rub or you can start with the waist yarn and the rebel cord and then start e rubbing So e rubbing every other needle and then we'll hand some weight and start knitting. So I hand some weight, now it's time to knit. I'm going to use my transferring tool to attach the cast on row back to the empty needle. We did this in many other videos. So you just pull out the empty needle and pick out the stitch at the edge and I place it on the empty needle and we just keep going and then the third column for the upside down V place it on the third empty needle and this uh, last extra stitch, I will just place on the last needle. And I will push out all the needles to the D position. Just to make sure it needs properly for the next row. Because this row will be kind of tight, so you can hand knead it or you can increase the tension just for this row. I increase the tension one click up just for this row. Now we finish the mark ribbon. We can change the tension back to your main tension. Now we have to decide the location of the cable. I have it every 20 stitches. Every 10 stitch on LK150, the color changes. So I have a cable around 40. And I do a 3x3 three three cable crossing, or you can do 2x2. Two two. And then we skip this one, and we will do the next one. 20, 3 stitch on the left, 3 stitch on the right. And we skip the 10, we do the 0, 3 stitch, 3 stitch. We skip the left 10 and we do the left 20 and we skip the 30 and we'll do the 40. So when it's done, you can see this part can connect with the right part and the pattern will be continuous. And you can see how many cable we have. One, two, three, four, five. Only five cables. And we are also going to drop the stitches next to the cable stitches. You can do a reforming stitch to just drop it down and match it up so it's pearl stitch on outside of the cable. That will make the cable look better. Or the simple way is to just drop the stitches. We'll do the same outside of every cable. This stitch and this stitch. To drop the stitch, we just transfer the stitch to the next needle. So this part is the cable, the six stitches, and outside the six stitch, and transfer one to the next stitch away from the cable, and pull out the needle back to the A position, the non-working position. And we do the same on the other side. 
transfer to the next stitch and put the needle to non-working position. So we have two stitches out of work and we just continue doing the rest of the cables. And that's what it looks like after you transfer the stitches. We are going to have around 50 rows for this cowl or neck warmer. So we don't want the cable to be at the edge. I leave five rows on top and bottom and there will be the first cable crossing here and every nine rows you get the crossing nine rows so it will be one two three four five five cable crossings and i'm going to cross all the cable in the same direction so it's easier so we need our first five rows and i like to change the row count back to zero Now I have my five rows. You can see the dropped stitch that creates the ladder. And we can start to do the first cable crossing. Because I have six stitches total, so I use two of the three stitches transferring tool. And I just start by pulling this out, transfer it to the tool and also the other side take it off the machine and I like to put the right side to the left you can put the left needle to the right first it doesn't matter but it seems easier for me to do this way so I place the right needle to the left you can use your finger to help to transfer the stitch and then place the left three stitches to the right and now we have the first cable crossing and you can pull out all the stitches so it doesn't drop stitches and it will be easier to knit and now we just keep going the next one will be around the 20s and the same way I can use the transferring tool Hold it and the right side. Hold it and I do the same. I do the right side to the left first. It really doesn't matter. You can decide which way to transfer. It gets a little bit tight with uh, three needle crossing and we'll just continue all the way now I finish all the first cable crossing that's what it looks like and now we can continue to knit nine rows and then do a cable crossing again and we repeat it four more times and then we'll do the five rows and do the mark ribbon now we've done the 9 rows, you can see that's the first cable crossing and that's the 9 rows and we'll do the cable crossing again on those stitches. That's what it looks like after I cross the cable again. And I'm going to need another 9 rows and cross cable again and we just keep repeating it several times. Now we have 5 cable crossing one two three four five and we will start need uh, five rows to match the beginning five rows and then we'll do a mark ribbon to match the beginning of the mark ribbon We finish the cable part. We are going to do the mark ribbon again. So we have to transfer the stitches. So it's every other needle again. And we can just transfer the second stitch to the first one.
And make sure you put the empty needle back to the non-working position so you don't need it by accident. And some needles are already empty because we dropped the stitches next to the cable. And that's okay. And now the next one. And we just keep going so there's stitches on every other needle. And we can pull out the needle so the stitch doesn't pop out and it's easier to knit. And some needles might be empty and we need a stitch there. And again, we do the same, just transfer the next stitch to that stitch. So we have stitches on every other needle and put away the empty needle to the non-working position. Now I finished transferring all the stitches. Now it's every other needle. And we can start to knead the mark ribbon the same row number as the beginning. I have 23 rows, so I will need 23 rows. And I'm going to change the tension to 6.5 for this row because it might be a little tight. And change it back to your main tension. I change to number 6 and start knitting 23 rows. After you knit 23 rows, you can take off all the weight. We are almost done. And I'm going to hand it back to the empty needle again. Or you can just knit a few rows of waist yarn and take it off machine and uh, sew it by hand. Now I'm just going to pick up the stitch and uh, place on empty needle and you can see this is the row when we start to change to every other needle so i will pick those stitches a lot of them have two stitches together and that's the one i'm going to pick up i will pick up those stitches and place on the empty needle those stitches and i will start with the one on the edge See, this is the big one with uh, two stitches next to the hole. And I'll place on first empty needle. Second empty needle. And then that's the third one. Place it on empty needle. The next one. You can knit one row and bind off with a sewing bind off or any stretchy type of bind off. For me, I'm just going to cut the yarn, leave a long tail, and start sewing up on the machine directly. So I have my yarn tail on the first needle and I'm going through the second stitches from the back. I go through the second stitch from the back and now I go back to the original stitch. Do everything below the needles so it doesn't get tangled. Now we will do the two stitch forward one stitch back pattern and so we go to the third stitch from the back and then go back to the second stitch from to the back and I can take up the first stitch and I will repeat the same we go through the third stitch from the back to the front and then go back to the second stitch front to the back the second stitch front to the back and then we'll take the first stitch of the needle and we keep going and some of the needles have two stitches so make sure you thread it through both stitches. Now that's what it looks like after we take it off the machine. 
And here is the back side. This is the cast on edge. And the one we just saw up, it's very stretchy. And it leaves a nice finish. So the only thing left is to fold it up and sew up the seam on the edge. You can start with the middle part, even just whip stitch. And the outside part, you can do the mattress stitch, or you can do the flat big fur seam, like I showed in the sock video. And then you are done.